All right, everyone. Well, this week I've got a pretty interesting text effect that, of course, as you may have guessed, was inspired by a movie. And what we're going to do is be generating this effect mainly with layer styles. But we've got to prepare some things before we go into the layer styles and use them to create the effect. And that's why I have this map open here. This is a relatively high-res, old-fashioned looking map here. If I go into the image, image size, you can see it's relatively large, 22 by 16. And all I'm going to do with this file is simply define it as a pattern that I'm going to use in the text. So I'm simply going to go under, under the Edit menu and go to Define Pattern. And I'll just give it a quick name. We'll call it Map. So I'm just going to minimize that file. I don't need it. Now let's go ahead and create a new document. I go into File to New, and I'm just going to create a 5 by 11 inch at 150 dpi. And we'll hit OK. And this text effect is going to look better against a black background. So I'm going to bring up my Layers panel. And I'm, with that background highlighted, I'm just going to press Option Delete to fill it with my foreground color, which is black. Then let's go ahead and set the text we're going to do. I'm going to select my text tool, and I'm just going to click once. And I'm just going to type the word pirates. And of course, we can't see it because it's filled with black. And black on black, you just can't see it. So with the text layer, layer highlighted, I'm going to press Command Delete. That will be Control Backspace to fill it with the background swatch, which is white. And I'm just going to scale this lettering in just a little bit here. And as you can see, Photoshop has conveniently chosen the right font for what I'm doing here. No, that's not true, actually. It's simply the font that I last used for this effect, which is called Caribbean, appropriately enough. And this font is actually a free font on a website called Dafont. It's D-A-F-O-N-T dot com. It's a really cool pirate-themed font there, so it works pretty good. But I need to change a few things about this font. I'm not particularly happy with a couple of things about it. And I'm going to do this in vector mode. So I'm going to convert this text into paths. So I'm going to control or right click directly on the layer and choose this item here, create work path. And, all I, can, and I can just throw the text layer away now. Since I have the paths, I don't really necessarily need the text layer itself anymore. So let's go into the paths pa palette. I'm going to double click on that path to save it. I can go ahead and give it a name. Let's call it Pirates. So now let's use our selection tools and change a few things here. I'm going to take the Path Selection tool. I'm just going to select this A right here. I'm going to press Command or Control T to bring up the free Transform. I'm going to go into the Edit menu and choose Transform Path, Flip Horizontal. Because I think that A looks better in the, the, the this way. I'll we'll just press Enter. Now I'm going to select this R and change a few things about it. I'm going to go back into the Selection tools and choose the Direct Selection tool. I'm going to select this collection of handles down here and just drag this element down to about there. And I'm going to click on this element here and get this little bezier handle. And I'm just going to push that in just to narrow that letter a little bit, just to create that little curve there. So there we have that. Now let's go back and get our path selection tool. And I'm just going to close in on these letters just to tighten up the kerning, finish that effect off. When I Select this last letter, S, and press Command or Control T, and just scale this up a little bit, just so it kind of bookends the overall look here. And I'm going to do the same with this P right here. I'm just going to go ahead and scale that up. And I'm also going to take my Direct Select tools we did earlier and just to select these handles at the bottom of this P and just kind of drag that down a little bit. And that will do that. So let's close in that I there and put the P right about there. Now let's select the entire text, and I'm just going to scale it overall up just a little bit more. So there is my finished text. So I'm going to go ahead and load this as a selection by pressing Command Enter, be Control Enter on a PC. And back in my Layers panel, I'm going to go ahead and create a new blank layer. And I'm going to go in here into my swatches, and I'm going to select this orange swatch right here. And with it set as my foreground color, I'm just going to press Option Delete. That would be Alt Backspace. And there we have our text on the layer. Now I'm going to do one more thing before I start applying the effect here. I need to create another pattern. I'm going to create a new blank layer, set my default colors. I'm going to go under the Filter menu and choose Render Clouds. And then simply go under the Edit menu again, and this time choose Define Pattern. Call this Clouds. So it's defined as a pattern. I no longer need it as a layer, so we'll just throw that away. All right, I want to add one more element to this word here. I'm going to create a new blank layer above it. I'm going to take my rectangular marquee tool here. 
And I'm just going to draw a shape right in between these letters. It's kind of like an underlying graphic. And I'm going to go ahead and take my eyedropper and sample this orange color and just press Option Delete and it'll fill that selection in there. Now I want to get rid of a little bit of area around this R here. I don't want that to be overlapping like that or just combining like that. So I'm going to activate or load the lettering as a selection by Command or Control clicking directly on that icon. But I'm still highlighted on this shape layer. So I'm going to go into the Select menu and choose Modify, Expand, and we'll do about 10 pixels. And I'm just going to hit Delete. Again, making sure we're on that shape layer. And you can see it's deleted the area around that letter. So it conforms to that shape a little bit better. Take my lasso tool. And I'm just going to give this underlining thing a, just a jagged edge. I'm just loosely drawing a selection along the bottom here. And then we'll hit Delete. And we'll do the same thing on the other side here. Just give it a little jagged selection and then, and then Delete. So now I'm just going to combine that layer this object with the lettering by pressing Command or Control E. And now all those elements are on their own layer. All right, so now let's just start applying the effect that will finish us off. I'm going to double click on the layers icon to bring up the layer styles. I'm going to go ahead and, and activate bevel and emboss. And I'm just going to leave all these bevel settings as they are. And I'm going to activate texture here. I'm going to highlight that item. And I'm going to click on this little arrow here. And we're going to find our pattern menu. And what we want to find is that map that we defined earlier. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. And it will apply it to my text. And it gives it a kind of a really cool bevel effect to it. I'm going to go ahead and leave the scale and the depth set to 100. But here's a cool thing. If I go into the actual document and click and drag, I can move that pattern around and give it a new position. So for instance, if I want this area here where this, these lines kind of cross, I want to kind of put them like somewhere in the middle off to the side. I can do that right about there. And because this is a layer style, if I hit OK, I can come back in here and highlight that texture and move it around again. So I'm not committed to where exactly I put it. I can go back and change it. So it's nice to know that I can do that. All right, so we've applied the texture. I'm going to activate one more thing here. I'm going to activate Pattern Overlay. I'm going to go ahead and highlight that. And I'm going to click in this window. And here's where we're going to choose those clouds that we defined earlier. And I'm simply going to change the blend mode of this to Color Burn. You can see it gives it kind of an interesting effect. It's a little too intense, so I'm going to drop the opacity down to about 50%. And I think that looks pretty good. And then we'll hit OK. So now that is the completed effect so far. Now I want to apply a couple of different layer styles, but I'm going to apply them on a different layer so I can blend the layers together and make it a little bit more interesting. So I'm going to load the selection of this layer by Command or Control clicking on it. I'm going to create a new blank layer right above it. I'm just going to press, press uh, Shift Delete to bring up the Fill dialog. And we're going to use 50% gray. And we'll hit OK. Now, just like we did before, I'm going to double click on this to bring up the layer styles. Now, I'm going to take the Fill Opacity down. By bringing the Fill Opacity, you can see that the object does, in fact, disappear. But all we're really affecting is the original pixels on the layer. When you drop the Fill Opacity down, your layer styles will still be visible, just not the original pixels on the layer. So that gray fill is kind of a placeholder, in a sense, for the styles that we're going to apply. So the first thing I want to do is apply a stroke. I'm going to highlight this. And let's go in here and modify this a little bit. I'm going to set the position to inside. I'm going to go ahead and leave the size to 3. But we're going to change the fill type to pattern. Then we're going to go over here and select this, one, this last one on the top right here. And then simply change the blend mode of this to hard light. That looks pretty good. All right, I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to activate an outer glow. And let's just kind of give this more of an orange glow to it, like it's really emanating from there. And let's go ahead and change this to hard light, increase that size just a little bit. You can see this interesting result I'm getting here. Let's take this down to about 50%. It's a little less intense. There we go. So I think that looks pretty good. I probably want to change the stroke to overlay. That's, that looks pretty good. Let's take that size up a little bit. There we go. So now we're getting a much more sinister glow there. That looks pretty good. So I'm going to hit OK there. Now, I'm just going to add one more element to this to finish it off. I'm going to create a new blank layer. And I'm going to go and get my brush tool here. And with a relatively soft edge brush, let's say about a number 35, painting with white, I'm going to bring white to the foreground there. I'm going to change something about this brush real quick, though. All I'm going to change 
Turn off shape dynamics there. All I'm going to do is inside the brush tip shape area is just squash the shape of the brush a little bit to make it more of an oval shape. Right about there. So now let's go into the lettering and just drop in some hot points. Make that brush a little bit bigger. Every so on, just in a few different spots, just drop in some hot points so it really looks like some light is hitting some points of this text really hard. And we'll do that. So just a few points there. But that pretty much is it. You can see that we've taken some simple textures, defined them as patterns, and then brought them into through a, through a layer style to apply a very interesting text effect all right there inside Photoshop. So you can see the kind of fun you can have this. Try it again yourself, and I hope you have fun.